One day here in Oklahoma, it feels like spring, and then the next, it is winter again. And while it's not time quite yet to go out and plant those traditional bedding annuals, I thought it would be a good opportunity to head inside the greenhouses here at the Botanic Garden to see some of the annuals that we've been growing that will soon be filling the gardens here. So let's go inside and take a look. Now this is a real behind the scenes look at our greenhouses. And so you're seeing some of the dirty stuff too, obviously, but we don't have a traditional head house that you might find at some greenhouses. Instead, we kind of have this little space that we use as our propagation area. No better way to reuse an old cast iron bathtub than to fill it with potting soil. So this is where we get a lot of our plants planted up over the winter months. And as you can see, we've got a lot of plants growing already. Keeping with that bath theme, however, this is no regular shower. In fact, we use these shower curtains to kind of protect us as we're walking by from the mist bench here. So you can see we've got a lot of stuff growing on our mist bench, a lot of our vegetable transplants, and some other uh, annual cuttings that we've taken uh, to utilize here in the gardens. So as we head through the greenhouse here, I wanna kind of show you some of the plants that are really good for um, our gardens and Oklahoma area in general. We've got, of course, a lot of salvias and coleus that I like um, and do well. Here behind us, we have a lot of oregano, um, germander, and uh, scented geraniums that will soon be going out into our herb garden. We also have a lot of verbenas, and there's one verbena I wanna show you. This is called cake pop. Um, now this is a verbena rigida that is a little bit more coarse in its foliage than some of the other verbenas. Um, and you can see how it's got this nice round ball of pink flowers atop it. So I'm really excited about seeing this out in the garden. We've got some ageratums and some gonfrinas, also the lion's ear. It's a nice uh, orange color if you're wanting to add some orange into your garden, of course. And then here we've got a South African phlox um, that you can see. Now this is actually a bacopa that's a little more drought tolerant and heat tolerant. So while we're often use that white bacopa, this is one that will withstand it. And I just love those yellow eyes in that flower there. Of course, we gotta have pollinator plants, right? So we've got plenty of lantana, portulaca, and a lot of scavola, a Mexican heather growing as well. And because greenhouse real estate is expensive, we have these nice rolling benches that allow us to utilize more surface area. I wanna highlight um, some euphorbias here that we have. Now the diamond frost euphorbia, you may be familiar with it. It was in Oklahoma proven a few years ago. Um, and you can see it's got its kind of light airy uh, uh, flowers to it. This is in the euphorbia family, so you're gonna see that white uh, latex oozing from it when you break the foliage or the stems. Down here in front, you'll notice that this euphorbia looks a little different. This is actually called diamond snow. So if you think about snow and frost, frost is usually a little lighter, so it's a little less heavy with the foliage and the flowers as the diamond snow is. Now heading on, we've got some others that I wanna showcase. So obviously petunias, petunias are great for constant color. Again, here's some more coleus. Um, this is the tattoo series, periwinkles. So we've got a papaya, and then we also have the raspberry, which has more of a darker eye to it there. Sweet potato vines, again, the nice thing about coleus and sweet potato vines is that they're gonna continue to give you color throughout the season, regardless of whether they're blooming or not. Also, here's another um, dichondra, and it will give you that silver foliage as well. Finally, another plant I wanna highlight, because a lot of times people ask about this one when we're out in the gardens, and so these are the morning glory trees. It comes in a pink and a white. Um, and then this is another morning glory. This is the woolly morning glory vine. Now, it will get a purple kind of morning glory flower to it late, late in the season, but really we grow it more for this foliage. These leaves will get three times the size of what this is right now. They'll get up to be about uh, 12 to 18 inches long. And what's really nice is the underneath will be more silvery um, as it's dancing in the wind. So it's a nice foliage, it's very velvety when you touch it. So this is just a highlight of what we have in this greenhouse. We do have another greenhouse that I also want to take you and take a look at. Mm -hmm. 
Now here we are in our second greenhouse and this is actually a newer greenhouse, only a couple of years old. So we don't have the rolling benches in here, which is actually nice because it allows us to have some large open space to keep some of our tropicals that if you've come to the gardens, you will see them around scattered throughout. So our elephant ear that's normally up by the building, the main patio area, also our citrus trees here. I mean, they're huge, right? But we have to bring them in to protect them. Um, these typically are used to flank our uh, vegetable garden, so you'll find those out there. And what's nice is that they're blooming right now, and so the fragrance just really fills the space. We have a lot of succulents also growing here on the ground, as you can see. Now, one of the questions that we get a lot when people come to the gardens is when they're visiting the patio garden specifically, if all of these succulents are hardy or not. Well, there are a few that are hardy, but we do have a lot that we have to bring in. And thanks to the ambassadors, a lot of them uh, come into the gardens and help us take those out of that space um, and protect them over winter time. So we've got a lot of those. We also have a lot of succulents that we're also propagating and growing out for our upcoming herb and succulent festival. Now, if you see here on the ground, we have a lot of herbs that just came in and we're so excited about these. We just got them potted up yesterday. Again, the garden ambassadors who are a huge help to us to keep everything going throughout our winter and also our growing season. So we've got these ready to go. They're gonna continue growing over the next few weeks and they will be available to anyone who wants to come and join us for our Herb and Succulent Festival on April 30th. So we're gonna have a lot of vendors that day. It's gonna be a fun day to be out here at the gardens. Please join us and fear not, spring will soon be here. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.